Hi, I'm Patricia, and welcome to my creative space. Today we're going to be working with a gel press to start with, and some alcohol inks. And we're going to make some really pretty papers. So let's get started. So to do this technique, you're going to need some saran wrap or plastic wrap or whatever you've got. And some alcohol inks. Um, here I'm just measuring it out, cutting it off, I'm going to scrunch it up. I got this somewhere off of YouTube. Um, I seen someone do a tutorial. I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. Um, I've gone through so many tutorials on creating my own papers that I have a hard time remembering. So I'm really sorry about that. But here's some alcohol ink that I made myself using 91% alcohol and some Sharpie markers. Um, I also got that off of YouTube. And I don't remember who that was, um, but I did this like made these years ago. But I got some purple on there, some blue on there. I just wanted to see how these homemade alcohol inks would work with this. This is the first time I'm trying it with these. So here I got some pink. And I'm just splashing it on real good. Just kind of going to town. So now I'm going to take my plastic wrap, put it over the top, and just kind of press it all out. Make sure the whole gel plate is covered. Just smushing it. I know it looks like a big old mess right now, but trust me, it will come together. And you'll be surprised at how pretty it turns out. Now I'm gonna take my paper and plop it on there, smooth it out here, making sure I get it all transferred, and voila. Now we got some pretty paper, and I just love the, the poofy plumes that it makes. Now don't waste that ink. Take your plastic wrap, put it back on your gel plate, grab yourself another sheet of paper, cardstock preferably, and, uh, Rub that out and you get a whole unique different print. Same colors but a different look because you're going to get all those wrinkles in there from the plastic wrap. So that's pretty cool. Okay now here I'm going to use my name brand alcohol inks and I've got a few colors here to choose from. Um, I believe I'm doing all blues on this one. I'm pretty sure that's what I picked. A bunch of different ones. I like to shake them up to make sure that they're been mixed up. So, here we go, getting started. I get me a piece of plastic wrap here again. And you'll see just how much these colors um, are so much brighter. Um, the homemade alcohol inks work just fine, um, but these alcohol inks are a lot better, I think. Um, I tried some other ones, some no-name brands, and they just didn't work out, or they were real oily, which I've never seen any beaver oily before but they were they left like an oil behind on the paper so I just tossed those out um, but yeah you see I'm putting it on here pretty good um, all kinds of different colors and I just sprinkle it about and I know it looks like a huge mess but it all comes together in the end So now I will grab my plastic wrap and pop that on there, smooth it out, just to make sure the whole gel plate is covered.
pick up the plastic wrap off, grab my sheet of paper, and smooth it down over it, making sure I pick up all that ink. And look at that one. Beautiful. Absolutely love the plumes of color you get. It just reminds me of the sky. That's why I like doing all that blue. And blue is my favorite color anyway. And so here I'll take the print off the plastic wrap. And we'll get that totally different look with the same colors. Because we'll get all those wrinkles in there which I just love that look and a lot of these you know I use for my card backings but I also like to use them for my die cuts too so now I'm going to switch to blue purple and pink which is my absolute favorite to use uh, I don't know why but I just love the the blues and the pinks and the purples together. It's just absolutely beautiful. But on this one here, I'm going to show you a little bit of a different stuff. Um, I'm going to show you how to double print it, um, which takes it next level, I think. Um, you get that nice smooth plume look along with the wrinkle look from the plastic wrap overlapping that, and I think it's just beautiful. So we'll do that. That's got it. Take my plastic wrap here. And I'm just using the other side of the last one I used. And I know that looks like a huge bad mess. But trust me, it's not. So paper, press, smooth it out, making sure that I get it all covered and look how beautiful that is absolutely gorgeous now we're going to double print that I'm going to put the plastic wrap back on there pick up the paper and I kind of want to flip it that way I'm not getting the same colors in the same areas Smoothing it out over it, and there we go. Double print. Beautiful. Then to clean my gel press off, I just use an alcohol wipe or wipe it down with some alcohol spray or something. Now we're going to jump into the alcohol inks on Yupo paper. I think I pronounced that right. You need alcohol blending solution, alcohol spray, 91%. You're going to want a pair of tweezers or maybe a needle tool, some paper towels. Um, I did find a needle tool works best later on. Uh, using the tweezers is still kind of thick. If you have thin tweezers, you might be able to get the edges up easier, but yeah. Um, so I got some real thin uh, Yupo paper here. Um, I'm going to use it up. I bought some off of Amazon. I got a couple different ones. There's one I got at Hobby Lobby. It was like almost $14. Um, I really like it. But anyways, I got this other cheap stuff that I don't really care for. It's really thin. And if you use a um, embossing tool on it or heat tool or whatever, it warps it really quick if you're not swiping over it really fast. So I try not to heat this stuff up too much because it will warp. And I think I might have warped a piece on here when I was doing this. I can't remember. But anyways, just <clears throat> put your blending solution on there. And uh, I do remember where I got this idea. It was from Jennifer McGuire. Um, I don't think she uses as much ink as I do. I just, I smother the thing. I don't know why, but I do. 
I always overuse my ink, so you really don't need to use that much. You can see how much is spilling out there. Uh, but I really go over the top with my inks. <laughs> so here I think I got it, and I don't have it separated. So I'm trying to separate it. Swoosh it about, pull it off, and you get a beautiful print. Well, you get beautiful two prints here. So you get like a mirror image. So here I am with my embossing tool going over it real quick just to dry up that ink so I can set it aside. But yeah, these come out beautiful. I love it. Very beautiful. And I use the silver mixed live in this also is what I used. Um, I don't think I showed what colors I used, but I did use the silver mixative. So, yeah. I think it makes it look like lightning going through it. But yeah, and I mean, really, if you have a needle tool or something, I would suggest using that because it lifts it up off the glass mat a whole lot easier than the tweezers. So I'm just going to draw up the back here real quick. That way I can set it down. No worries of it transferring over everything. So I'll grab this next one up. Hopefully. Now this one, it really got on the back, so you could actually use either side of this one if you wanted to. Kind of cool on both sides. So, yeah, I usually make a huge mess. But that's part of the fun of creating sometimes, is making a huge mess. So, and you can see all that that's still on my glass mat. I do believe I sopped that up with another piece. Let's see, I think I believe I did. So I'll take my alcohol spray, and I'm gonna spray it down. Well, maybe I wiped it up. So, yeah, I got a piece of paper, another piece of equal paper here. I'm sopping up the collars, see what I get. Don't waste it. Just keep using it until it's all used up. Sometimes I don't think there's enough there that I can do that with, but sometimes there is, so. If you think there is, use it up. Don't let it go to waste. So just drying that again with my heat tool. Okay, now I think I cleaned it up. <laughs> Got my blue towel, I'm just gonna swipe that up. And get ready for my next piece that I'm gonna do. I love this class mat. I like to get the great big one because I'm always in need of a lot of room. Because I usually have several projects going on at once. So here I'm going to take one of my uh, better sheets and I'm just going to put the blending solution on the glass mat. And I'm going to take my colors and just put them on my glass mat. Sorry about that, I forgot to turn my phone down. So yeah, it looks like I'm doing pink and purple and probably blue. Yep, I guess that's my favorite. Dang it. Sorry about that. And a little bit of that silver mix of it in there. Not a lot of it, I guess. I really like that stuff. 
Now I'm going to take my tweezers, hold that paper, just kind of smush it, shake it about, and get a beautiful, beautiful press. Absolutely gorgeous. I love this one, and I wish I would have seen this earlier, but it looks like the moon and the clouds and everything up there. I wish I would have seen that earlier to keep that print like it was, but I didn't. But I seen it when I rewatched the video. Very pretty. So now there's a lot of ink on here, so I'm going to use that up. See what the all different kinds of prints I can get. You can see I got ink all over me. And I will tell you another tip I just learned on YouTube from, uh, I can't remember her name now. I think the Frugal Crafter, but don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. Um, love of soap. Gets the ink off your hands. Even the alcohol ink. Yeah. So try that. I don't always have gloves and I'm always inked up. So I loved getting that tip from her. So just trying that. I think that one come out really cool. It looks like a little face in there. So I believe now I'm going to spray it with my alcohol, my 91% alcohol, reactivate it. Caught me on another sheet of yellow paper. It's yupo, yep, yupo. Maybe it's yupo. I always get it wrong. So that one's pretty too. And you can see the colors of all mixed in this pretty much purple. But yeah, I love, love, absolutely love this technique. I like doing it with the, the two sheets together or just putting it on the glass mat. Either way. Absolutely love what I get. So, I think we're coming up to the next technique here. Clean this off and be right back. Okay, now I'm taking my 91% alcohol and I'm just spraying that on the paper to give it a little bit more interest here. Because I didn't quite like this one so much. It's the one that's got the little face in it. So all those little white dots in there. It's very nice. I like it. And here's another technique I learned from Jennifer McGuire. Marbling technique. Putting your alcohol inks in water. And then putting your yupo paper, yupo paper, yupo I think. I'm always getting it wrong. Anyways, you can use your your yupo paper or um, I believe you can also use uh, water and color paper. Um, I decided to try some mixes in here. It didn't work very well because it just wants to clump. So I wouldn't mess with that unless you want to try to get the look of it in there. So you can see for yourself how it turns out. I'm just going like, to grab that with my tweezers here. I need a better, better pair of tweezers though. Just slide your paper in. <laughs> Let it pick up all that color. Awesome marbling. Take another sheet. Do it again. like colored chunks on there. It's kind of cool. So I'm going to add some more colors. 
And as long as they're light colors, you can keep adding. Uh, if you're gonna switch up your colors, you know, dump it out, get some fresh water. Too many color choices. Okay, so grab me a sheet of paper here. And dive into this one. That one's nice. I like that. You know, I love my blue. Add another towel to put some more down on. Grab me another sheet of paper, run it through. Get them colored chunks on there. I love that. It's just so cool. Sorry about that. Switching out the water. I'm going to try a new one. And with my purple. some pink and some blue that's so pretty in the water I love the look of it in the water take my paper and run that through Awesome. I love how that one came out. Take me another one and run it through. That was nice too. So there we got a few of those. Now I'm just going to take my heat tool here. Okay, I'm going to dry them off so I can put them up. Okay, here again is another technique. I went from Jennifer McGuire. Stamping on top of your inked paper with an archive lead and then lifting it up. It's pretty cool. Like I said, I really wish I would have noticed that looked like the moon and clouds on this one. But what's done is done. They still come out pretty. So I'm gonna ink up my stamp here. And again, if you remember, this was the alcohol ink on the pupil paper. And I got me a towel on hand to wipe it off and then I get the ink on there and you can use a light color or you can use the black and it'll come out kind of grayish <clears throat> but you're still able to see it in there and it's kind of cool so just making sure I got it all inked up I take my towel and start wiping it off. You want to get to it right away. Okay, bring it in for a closer look so you can see what it looks like. There we go. You got that shadow effect from stamping it and wiping it off. I love that look. It's beautiful. Like I said, if you use a light color, then it's going to come out more close to the color. Clean off my stamp here. Just wet my rag with some water and wipe it down is all I do. And so that's it for this tutorial. Hit this tutorial.
tutorial was helpful to you in any way, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I have a Facebook group for clay creations and jewelry creations. Um, I hope to see you there. I hope to add more paper projects to my tutorial list. But yeah, here's all the ones we did in the marble. I really love that blue one. So that's what we got. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.